I love optical illusions, and so I've got one here with me today. From this perspective, you can see uh, an old grumpy lady. But if I turn it around, from this perspective, she's turned into a beautiful young princess. So let's look at that again. Here's a grumpy old lady. And this way, we have a beautiful young princess. And it's amazing how our perspective can shape how we view things. And so when I think about circumstances and what different people are going through, particularly at this time of the coronavirus, we can respond in many different ways. And I'm really trusting that through today's devotion, we would get God's perspective on things. And so I want to welcome you to our daily devotion called the Lockdown Look Up. And the reason we're looking up is because we want to get God's perspective on things. And so we've been in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And today I want us to look at the fruit of joy. So what is joy? Well, joy in the Greek is the word chara, and it means delight, it means gladness, it means happiness. Joy is a deep and abiding happiness in Christ. It is the fruit of God in our lives. When we delight in God, when we are enjoying Him, presence that is joy it is a gladness that is produced as we become aware of the gospel in our lives as we become aware of how much God loves us and I think we should wake up every morning and we should say wow God loves me because when we think about our sinfulness when we think about the Holy Spirit who wants to develop this fruit in our lives the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin we see ourselves as we truly are and then the Holy Spirit drives us towards Christ we see his beauty we see his cross Christ is magnified in our lives and so we experience joy and we can experience it every single day. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4, the Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. He says it's possible to rejoice in the Lord always and then he says, I'll say it again, rejoice. And so his command to us is to rejoice not in our circumstances, not in the things that are going on that change like the seasons but to rejoice in the Lord. And when we're in the Lord, it's kind of like being in an airplane. When you're in an airplane, whatever happens to that plane happens to you. You are in the plane. And so in some sense, in Christ, we live at two addresses. When the apostle wrote to the church at Philippi, in chapter 1 and verse 1, he said that they were the holy ones of God in Christ Jesus and at Philippi. So they lived in these two domains, and so do we. We live in the world with corona uh, and, and all of the fears and circumstances around us, and yet at the same time, we are in Christ. And that reminds me of a tree in my garden. It's actually just behind the camera. You can't see it. It's been growing there probably for 50, 60 years. And this tree is probably about 50 meters high as I look up at it. And in some sense, this tree dwells in two domains. There's what I can see above the ground, which is susceptible to the storms. And we've been living in this house for 14 years. And when I think of all those hectic Joburg storms we've had, uh, this tree is still standing, uh, touch wood. <laughs> um, but beneath the surface is another domain where the roots are going deep, deep down into the ground. And uh, this tree is able to withstand those conditions because it has another address beneath the surface. And so it's a wonderful privilege when we think about the fruit of joy that is produced by the root of joy. And so this root of joy needs to go down into Christ. We need to be experiencing Christ every day so that we can withstand the tempests of life. And so I want to read from John chapter 15 because Jesus describes this fruit of joy. And it's John chapter 15. I just want to read verses 8 and verse 11. This is to my Father's glory. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. And then verse 11. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So how do we cultivate joy? How do we have this joy, this complete joy that Christ talks about? Well, let's turn over to a prayer that Christ prayed in John chapter 17. And I'm just going to read verses 13, 15 and 17. Jesus says, I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world. And this is Jesus praying to his Father. So, Father, I'm coming to you now, but I'm saying these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. The full measure of Christ's joy within us. 
And then verse 15, Jesus says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world. God doesn't want to remove us from our circumstances and kind of shelter us in some way. He's keeping us in the world. He says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one in the world. And then verse 17, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So how do we cultivate this joy? The Holy Spirit has planted it within us, but how do we seek to develop it? Well, I think Jesus gives us a link here between joy and the truth. He says that we'll be sanctified. We will know his complete joy if we're sanctified by his word, the truth. And so our circumstances want to shout at us. They want to shout at us to disobey God, to doubt, to fear. And we've got to have roots that are stronger than those circumstances. We've got to dwell in the word. We've got to be thinking about the word, meditating on it. In fact, you might not know that the Hebrew word for meditate and the Hebrew word for murmur is in fact the same Hebrew root word. And so in Psalm 1 when it says happy is the man or blessed is the man or joyful is the man, then he, he's like a tree who's planted by this beautiful, beautiful water. And his roots go down and he develops fruit in season and yet he meditates on God's word day and night. It's the same word for murmur. And so my challenge to us today is that we would meditate, that we would churn over not our circumstances, not our fears, not our doubts, but we would spend so much time in God's word. We would spend time praying. There would be thinking of these things and allowing God's truth to supersede all other realities in our lives. Because our hearts are racing, our emotions are racing, and we just need to quieten ourselves and we need to meditate on God's love for us. You know what James tells us? He gives us a command. And in James chapter 1 and verse 2, he says, Consider it pure joy. Consider it. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And so James wants us to lead ourselves to consider just like that optical illusion, to consider our reality in the light of God's truth, that nothing can separate us from his love, that our destiny is secure, that God has promised to be with us, that there's nothing that can pluck us out of his hand, that he's working all things together for the good of those who love him. These are great truths that we need to get down into our souls until they shape and bring deep and abiding happiness in Christ. So won't you join me as we pray? As we pray, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Father, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, who for the joy set before him allowed that to shape his perspective on the cross. Thank you for the role of your Holy Spirit, and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd enable us in this season to experience Christ, to experience God's love, to experience this fruit of joy in our lives. And Lord, may that joyful perspective bring hope and healing to others who we love, who maybe don't know you, who are experiencing fear at this time and uncertainty. Thank you that for us you have removed the sting of death. And I pray, Lord, that our joy in you would rub off on others and they might come to know the God of joy. And so, Lord, may the joy of the Lord be our strength in this season. And in the words of Peter, we say, Lord, O oh, Father, we have not seen Christ and yet we love him. And even though we do not see him now, we believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For we are receiving the goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls. Amen. I really trust that you'll have a great day meditating on our great God. God bless you.